Hi YouTube, it's Courtney. I'm checking in for my day four post-op uh, VSG surgery update. So I made it to the promised land. Um, let's start out with my highest numbers, um, or my numbers, period. So my highest weight was 345, and that was when I started my bariatric program. I didn't lose much on the program, so we're just going to say that's my highest weight and leave it at that. My surgery weight at the hospital was 327, so we'll go with that. And my current weight as of yesterday, I haven't weighed myself today, is 321.4, so that's a total of 5.6 pounds lost since surgery. Um, I haven't done an update on the hospital. Things were a little rough the first day or two, so I'll just go over that quick, and I know everybody's wondering. So, um, I left here around 9 o'clock to go to the hospital with Paul and Josh, and they were really great. Uh, I was warned when I got to the hospital that my surgeon was running an hour behind, so um, my original surgery time was scheduled for 11. Um, they got me in, they put me in a pretty decent um, pre-op waiting room, and a window with TV and everything, but mostly we were entertained by what was going on around us. Um, they did put me smack dab in front of a coffee machine, like across the hall, which was kind of annoying, but that's fine. Um, I had a really great nurse. She, I think her name was Julia. I'm not sure anymore. Um, she was funny. I called her a flight attendant because she was just on everything so fast. Um, once everything got created, they put their IV in. I've got bruises. I don't know if you can see them all. I've got bruises here, here, here from where they drew blood, and here from my IV. I had a blowout in my IV, but I'll get to that. Um, so they put my IV in. Um, I wasn't. I was calm. I like made a hospital selfie and was just joking around with Paul and Josh. And um, everybody came in and I started to meet everybody. I talked to the anesthesiologist. I told him my problems with the anesthesia and he's like, "Oh, you're the real deal." And I was like, "Yeah, it's gonna suck." So he promised me that he'd put me on a medication before surgery. Then he'd put me on three during surgery and then two after surgery. So uh, after everything got done and settled and papers were signed and I met everybody and they asked me my name and my date birth date like 9,000 times. Um, the OR nurse came in and introduced himself and then he, it was the most like male nurses I think I've ever met in one like hospital. But um, the OR nurse came in and he said, okay, we're going to bring you in now and let's go walk into the OR. So we walked down a short hallway and then around a corner and then the OR was like right like, like a few feet from my pre-op room. And he walked me in and I turned around and he said, okay, I'm going to undo your gown. And he sat me down and he mentioned my huge back tattoo, which everybody does. And then he said, okay, lay down. We're going to strap you in. They strapped me in and then they put the oxygen mask on me, which I had a really hard time breathing out on the oxygen mask and it was annoying me. But it was like three seconds after that, that he said he was going to put the medication in my IV, which really burned. And then I don't remember anything. When I woke up on post-op, usually post-op I have like washing machine feelings. And usually they say that's because they're waking me up as they're moving me. They must not have done that this time because I woke up in um, recovery in the PACU. And I was in so much pain. I felt like my heart was exploding through my chest. So I kept saying pain, pain, because that's the only word that I could get out. I was in that much pain. And I finally rolled over on my side and... Um, she got me in, I think they said it was like 25 milligrams of Dilaudid. Um, at least that's what I remember in like the ether. I was really out of it. I was in and out, in and out. Um, uh, they Finally the pain subsided and it was mostly just gas pain after that. I did retch once or twice, but I never threw up, which is the first for surgery for me. Um, then they moved me up to my room, which was... I don't know, it was like an hour and a half later. It was pretty quick because I got up to my room. My surgery was at like 12.30 and I was up in my room by like 3.30. Um, they woke me up in my room. Um, they never transferred me from a bed, so they actually put me in my hospital bed um, when we were down in PACU. Excuse me, I'm still gassy. Um, okay, my sippy cup. So they um, they woke me up and they asked me how I was feeling and they gave me more pain meds and then I had my pain pump, which was nice. Um, I used that sucker a lot at first. Um, 
they wanted to get me up, but I was really out of it. Um, Josh and Paul didn't get to my room until like 4.30 or 5 o'clock because nobody told them that I was up in my room. Uh, so they kept asking and I guess they just were like, oh yeah, she's soon, soon. And nobody told them. Um, so they were finally up there and then Tara came around, I think it was like 6 or 7 o'clock. And everybody just kind of stared at me while I slept. I slept a lot for the first few hours. Um, then I got up, then everybody, le like, Josh and, uh, Paul left, and Tara hung around for a bit, and then I told her there was no point of staying, because I was just sleeping, and she left, and then around nine o'clock, they came in, and they said, okay, you have to get up, I went in, and I peed, sort of, and then they started bringing me for a walk, I did a lap, and I got back, and I was really nauseous, so they gave me more Zofran and Reglan, um, that seemed to do the job. They'd, like, alternate the Zofran and the Reglan for me, so I was never really without a new dose of nausea medication for more than two hours. Um, and then they came in again at, like, 11 o'clock, and they had me to go do for a, go for a walk again. And um, I got up and I peed, and my heart rate jumped really high, and so I sat down, and my nurse, Rick, Rich came in and he was like, look, you have to get up and walk. So I went and I started walking with him. And he got me like down the hallway of the wing, but there was like, it's a pretty big wing, um, the, like the South Circle. So uh, I I got to the end of my hallway and I was like, I don't feel right. And he said that I went really pale. And a nurse came running out from um, the reception area and she was like, her heart rate's 170. She needs to sit down. And so they got the wheelchair for me and I sat down. And I was just, like, really flush and, like, sweating, and I felt really warm. So he wheeled me back, and he put me in bed, and I took some pain pu I did my pain pump, and he gave me nausea medication, and he said, I'll be back in two hours, sleep. And they said they watched my heart rate, and my heart rate still stayed around 110 for the rest of the two hours. I slept, I got up, I walked again, and that time my heart rate only went to, like, 160 or 150, and every time after that it got better. Uh, he said by 2 o'clock I looked like a totally different person, that I was alert and talking, and I definitely looked like I felt better, and my heart rate was only getting to, like, 140. Uh, since I've gotten home, I've only had one incident with my heart rate, and it was the other day. I went and I did a walk around the house. I went upstairs, and I came back downstairs. And when I got to the kitchen, my heart rate was 140 or 150, I can't remember. So that's still a battle. Like, when I shower, I get really fatigued easily, so... Um, I've been keeping an eye on my heart rate just to make sure it doesn't go crazy. Um, they said that it's probably the anesthesia. I'll talk to Dr. Summer about it when I go and see him on Tuesday. But otherwise, I feel fine. Um, let's see. Post-op. I left. The next morning, I got up. And it was around 7 o'clock. And she said that it was time to go down for my swallow test. And I was the fifth one to go down. She said I was going to be the last one to go down. And they got me downstairs, and there were two people sitting in wheelchairs in the hallway, like, moaning in pain. And the radiologist comes out, and he's like, you're not going to feel like that, I promise. You're not going to feel like that. And I was like, okay, you're really instilling confidence in me. And then Dr. Summer came out, and he's like, how you doing? And he was really cheerful, and he's like, you look great. And he's like, well, let's get you in here and do this. He's like, I'm sure you're going to pass the flying colors. And if... Um, Anybody, if you have to, like, do a barium swallow, do the lemon. It sucked, but it was manageable. So I stood in front of an x-ray machine. They handed me, like, a small little glass, like a Dixie cup of, he said, two ounces of fluid. And he said not to drink the entire thing, only drink half of it, hold it in my mouth. And when they told me to swallow, they said he said swallow. Apparently, the person before me decided to dunk the entire two ounces back like a shot and then threw it all up. So, um, they were definitely, uh, he said that nobody before me had been able to finish the test. And I was like, great, that's fantastic. So I did the swallow test. They told me to put it in my mouth. That was horrible. And then, um, it was like swallowing concentrated crystal light lemonade with just straight lemon juice. It was nasty. And then he said, swallow. And because I knew I could only take in a few ounce, like a few sips at a time, thank you, YouTube, um, I slowly swallowed that one ounce over the course of like 10 seconds instead of just like gulping it back. And all of a sudden, like the people in the radiology room started cheering and they were screaming my name, like, like 
Courtney! And I thought I did something wrong. They're like, you did it! And I was like, okay, okay. And Dr. Summer's like, that's the best one all day! So, um, yeah, I guess I'm good at swallowing stuff. Um, so, uh, that, like, after it initially went down and they got it done, I was like, I think I'm gonna throw up. And I, like, I gagged. And then I burped, like, this ungodly belch. And then I felt fine. Um, so, they rolled me back to my room and they immediately brought me some water and a little cup. And they said, you have to drink this two ounce cup in 20 minutes. And I said, okay. I drank it in 15. And then they brought me out more. And I said, you have to drink this in 20 minutes. And I drank it in, like, 10. So she finally was like, okay, give me your sippy cup. <laughs> and she filled it up with water all the way. And she said that I had to get to the six ounce line and they would let me go home. But I had to do it in an hour. And I was like, okay. I did it in 40 minutes. So she was like, well, okay, you're doing fine. And then she handed me a two ounce thing of protein with ice in it. It was like lucerna or something. It was just the vanilla. And I drank that fine in like 10 or 15 minutes. Um, no problems. And I walked a little bit more. And then they discharged me. I was discharged. Um, technically, I could have probably gotten home by 11. But Josh and Paul got there at 12. And, um, excuse me. Um, and then I got home. The ride was a little rough. Um, and then I got home and I went straight to sleep. And I slept for the rest of the day into the next day. Um, worst thing so far. I haven't taken that much pain medication. The nurse recommended I take it before I go to bed. And if I get up and I'm sore. And that way she said I'll get through the day better. So I've been doing that. Uh, I didn't take any this morning. Um, gas pain. Gas pain sucks so bad. I've never had gas pain like this before. Uh, I didn't have it with my gallbladder. Um, it's like it just sits right in my rib cage and it presses on my heart. And there's nothing I can do to remove it. And it's really uncomfortable and it comes and it goes. And um, there's really no rhyme or reason to it. It's better today. The first... Oh, um, the first two days were really rough. Um, it's gotten a little bit better. Today's the first day that I woke up and I really didn't have any gas pain. I had horrible heartburn the first two days, but I think that was because I was using, um, three days. I think the second and the third day was because I was using, uh, Crystal Light Blackberry Lemonade and it wasn't sitting well in my stomach. And, uh, I think it was the lemonade portion of it. So I switched over to the Crystal Light, um iced tea and it's been fine. Um, I can drink water okay. I just got sick of it. Um, yeah, so gas pain, my incision pain. I have four in I have four incisions and I have one in my belly button. Um, I'm gonna get up and I'll show you guys. They're really bad. Um, they're really bruised. I had some leaking. Oh. Sorry, sorry. Let me make sure I'm not showing you any of the goodies here. So We've got one here, one here, and then there's one in my belly button that he did like on the top of my belly button. And then there's glue that like leaked that I can't get off. But there's an incision here and one here. And then this right here is from my heparin shot. This is about as close to a skin flick as you're going to get from me. Um, I'm really swollen still. Uh, it hurts to sit down. Um, it uh it's really sore still um pretty much as sore as I was probably for my gallbladder maybe a little bit more because of the gas pain um otherwise I'm doing well walking around uh it's been really cold here like six degrees so getting outside has been not good Tara and I went to a consignment shop with Carrie our friend Paul's girlfriend and um we sold a lot of clothes that we couldn't wear anymore, and she bought a few jeans, and the consignment shop is really nice, so I'll probably go back there once I get down a little bit lower, because I don't have a lot of plus-size jeans. Um, otherwise, you know, doing really well. I just, I, I f like, I joke that I don't feel like I had surgery, but I do. Um, I don't feel much restriction yet, that's for sure. Um... I can feel a little bit of fullness, like after I had three and a half ounces of Premier Protein Shake this morning, and that's probably my limit. I definitely felt full after that. Um, 
And I definitely can't drink much after that for a while. It sits in my stomach for a long time. Um, but yeah, I mean, I go to see my surgeon on Tuesday, and that's when he's supposed to release me to do mushies. So uh, we're almost there. We're almost to mushies. I don't know how I feel about that yet. I'm excited to eat something. I haven't eaten something in like three weeks, and I just want to eat something. Um, I've been eating a lot of egg drop soup. Last night we got it from a different Chinese restaurant, and it was really thick and snotty and viscous, so I I couldn't eat that. But the egg drop soup that I had the other day was really good. Um, but anyway, this is 15 minutes long, so I'm going to do my shout-outs. Um, Melissa Collins should be coming home today from her surgery. Uh, congratulations. I haven't heard much from her, but her husband Barry has been kind enough to update her Facebook wall with updates, so I hear she's doing well. And... Um, Amy gets a VSG. Uh, she is on her liquid diet right now. She's on either day three or four. Um, keep strong. It's going to be worth it, I promise. Uh, you've made it this far. And there was one more person that I want to give a shout out, but I don't think I've ever actually shouted out to before, but she's awesome. And she's a good friend. And she's always checking on me. And yes, she asked me for my address a few weeks ago, and I had no clue what she was going to send me. But she sent Tara and I these absolutely adorable um little charm so thank you stephanie or fat doesn't define me um it was nice to get this little gift um in the mail yesterday i'm trying to open it up we haven't actually opened up the bag yet so there's these little loser benches with hearts on them they're absolutely adorable so i'm gonna put it on my keychain so i can walk around with it so thank you very much Anyway, I hope everybody's having a good weekend, and I'll be in touch for um, an update after my post-op appointment with my surgeon. Bye.